you guys. I'm sitting in my office. See some of my books, window paraphernalia behind me, some hand planes, all the good stuff that I love. And uh, we are going to be talking windows. And I'm not going to do a really a um, kind of like a skills thing today, but I did want to talk about something really important on windows. And that is why you should restore your windows. I feel like um, a lot of times we focus on the, the how, like what paints to use, what primers to use, what glazing putties to use, all that kind of stuff. And uh, today we're going to talk about the why. So good to see you guys joining on Instagram and on YouTube. We do this every Wednesday. Uh, Trevor, New Light Restoration, good to see you, man. Seattle Tudor, always good to see you. Um, lots of good folks. We'll throw out some waves and some love for you folks. Always love having y'all here. Um, and I've got a lot of good questions today. I got, a, man, I just got a ton of questions. Uh, Cheeseburger, how you doing? Good to see you. Always love that name. Um, but uh, what I wanted to uh, focus on today is really the why for those of you that are just joining. Love to have you all here and talk about it because um, one of my employees said once, he said, man, I, I just wish somebody loved me the way that Scott's lo Scott loves windows. Uh, <laughs> I felt a little bad for him, but I was like, yeah, I know that's kind of my thing. I kind of have an issue with windows. I like them a lot. Um, and uh, give you, uh, hopefully this will help you understand why you should restore your old windows or why they're worth restoring. So let's just jump right in and get started on this. So why should you restore your windows? So say you've got an old house built before World War II, which is what I consider historic windows. Windows built, uh, windows on homes, usually wood or steel windows that were built before World War II because things changed after World War II. We uh, had the baby boom, there were a lot of GIs coming home from the war and they needed houses quickly and we started changing the way we built things. Before then, we built houses a little slower. We had old growth materials like old growth lumber. Um, I'm not saying that the building techniques back then were better, but what I am saying is that the, the, uh, basically the materials we were using and the mindset that we were building houses with was more of a build it and maintain it and I I'm gonna buy this house and be in this. My, my sons, my daughters, my children's children's children will probably live in this house. That's not how we think now. And when you build a house with that mindset, that's just that you build it with different materials and you build it in a different way. You build it where it's repairable. So number one reason why you should restore your historic windows if your house is built before World War II is that you've got windows that are meant to be repairable. They are something that you can easily fix. Doesn't mean it doesn't take a lot of work, a lot of effort on there, right? I mean, any of us who have done some paint scraping or reglazing or anything know the pains and passions that it takes to restore windows but they are repairable. Unlike modern windows today where, what do you do when the seals fail on a double pane window? You throw it away and buy a new one. That's not a great idea. Let's find something better. We, we can do this so much. We can have much better options. And I, I love the, that about these old windows. When the glass breaks, you get a baseball through the window. We actually just got a call for that today at Austin Historical. Somebody had a baseball go through a window. No problem, we'll go out there. All you need is a piece of glass. I'm gonna get one piece of glass. I'm going to replace it, put some glazing putty on, and you're done. I don't have to call a manufacturer. I don't have to find a specialized part. There's nothing complicated. It's a rope and pulley or it's hinges. Really basic stuff, very simple, and it's really most effective. I feel like most designs are very, very effective when they're simple. You don't need to get complicated. So that's one of the main reasons I love restoring old windows. So that's one. Number two, the energy efficiency. People are always... Uh, getting on to me about the energy efficiency. The craftsman's wife, look at that. My wife even joined this. I love it. Um, I don't have, uh, I appreciate you coming out and uh, taking a break from doing all your hair, sweetie. Um, so um, why do you, why, why is the energy efficiency? Everybody thinks you need to replace your windows because you need better energy efficiency. That is not so much true. So Energy Star, and, I, and I'm not going to tell you, this is not going to be false news. This is not going to be false news, fake news. I'm not, uh, Pointing new phrases here. It's not going to be fake news. It's not going to be a lie. It's not going to be my opinion on stuff. Energystar.gov. You can go to it right now. If you replace your windows with uh, your single pane windows with a new double pane Energy Star rated window, in my environment at least, in, in Florida, here's the deal. In Florida, they say that you're going to save a house full of windows. That is 20 windows is what they estimate on Energystar.gov. They estimate you'll save $155 per year. That's it. Like, how much are those replacement windows gonna cost you? $600 each? You won't get that back. You won't get the energy savings. Yes, it may be more energy efficient. Your energy bill will go down 
10 to $15 per month. But if you spend 10,000, 15,000, $30,000 on replacement windows, what are you talking about? You're not saving any money long term. So that's a big, I think that's a big myth. It's a big fallacy on why you should replace your windows. You should restore your windows, or if at the very least, simply keep your windows. Your old windows are not as energy inefficient as you may think they are, as you've been told they are by the window replacement companies who are out there to sell you that product. Yes, I would love for people to come to Austin Historical and restore their windows and hire us to do that. But honestly, I don't care if you come to my company or somebody else's company, or even if you don't restore them, you just keep them. That's what we're really focused on is please keep your original windows. And yes, you should restore them. You should hold on to them. You should make, you can make them beautiful again. You can make them functional again. But don't believe the myth that you are going to save tons of money by, um, oh, sorry, by uh, replacing your windows. It's just a lie. It's not true. You may save some money, but the best estimates they have are that windows account for around 10% of the energy use in your home. That's not where you want to focus your time. Your attic, your roof, accounts for 30 to 40%. So if you really want to save money on your energy bills and you want to be a green homeowner, the best way to do it is to look at insulation in your attic, having a lighter colored, if you're in a southern climate, having a lighter colored attic or roof color. Don't do a black roof in Florida or the south. Um, you know, use some of those light colors. There are some options on there. I've seen some questions here already. So uh, I'm gonna ask a couple, answer some of these questions that they tie in. So somebody said, what do you think about colder climates? Um, and uh, for keeping old single pane windows. So um, that ties in with the energy efficiency, I wanted to say, is the idea that they didn't know about double pane efficiency back in the day, back in 1910 or 1880, they absolutely did, and they had storm windows. Whether you do an interior or an exterior storm window, the WPSC, that's the Window Preservation Standards Collaborative, has done extensive testing on this, and they have shown through ASTM standards um, that you can get, you can exceed the 2012 energy codes. And I'm not sure that that's still the one we're using today, but I know a few years ago it was still what was required for um, air leakage, which is the biggest part of energy efficiency. U factor affects some places, um, your SGHC, if we're getting all these technical terms, but really it's about how much air leaks through your window. Everybody thinks double that these old windows, historic windows are super leaky. They are indeed not. You put an old window together, you weather strip it, which any old window should have been. If it's not, easy enough to do. Spring bronze, I've got lots of tutorials on that. There's other weather stripping you can use. And you put a storm window on it, and you will exceed the current code's requirements for air infiltration. That's with your historic window. So no, you don't need to replace it to get better energy efficiency. It's really not necessary, and it's a big waste of money. So that's two reasons. Number three, why should you restore your historic windows? I think that this is probably one of the main reasons that people do for uh, hire my company to do this is the, the character, the authenticity, the beauty of them. Um, if you took even the most attractive new window out there today, our new replacement window, and you caked it full of 14 layers of paint and left it, let it sit and get dirty and dusty for the next 80 years, it's going to look like crap. I'm sorry to say it. That's what it's going to look like. So is it the fault of the window? No, I mean, it's it's just beat up and old. Doesn't mean it can't be brought back. And that's the beautiful thing about these original windows. You're not going to find a replacement window that is going to have the same architectural fit with your house. If you've got a bungalow and you've got three over one windows, or you've got a Victorian that's got the two over two layout, or you've got a colonial that's like nine over nine or 12 over nine, or some of these really unique uh, light patterns. I even saw a house the other day that had uh, 24 diamond patterns over a one light. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. You're gonna pay handily to try and get something like that today. And you could just keep what you've got. It fits the house. It was designed with the house in mind. Your replacement window was not. It may come close. It may try to mimic that. But really, the historic window is gonna be the best fit for your house. They're dimensional. The Muntins are dimensional. They're individual panes of glass. You break one pane of glass, you don't have to replace all of them. Architecturally, it fits with the style. You got the right windows that were supposed to come with your house. Don't put a replacement on there that's close, but no cigar, right? Keep the original stuff. They're gonna maintain the architectural integrity. And honestly, with the resale value, I think that you're gonna do better keeping your original windows. And may, you may ask, why on earth is that true? Because think about, if you own an old house, why did you buy that old house, right? You might say, well, you know, it's the care. I wanted the old house, the character. This character's great, absolutely. 
So if you take the windows out and you replace them, did you destroy the character of that house? Well, maybe not entirely. If you take the wood floors out, did you destroy the character? Well, maybe not entirely. Did you take the plaster walls down? Did you destroy the character? Not entirely. But if you take the windows, the wood floors, you strip the plaster off, you take all this historic material and you get rid of it and you're just down to the studs, it's not really an old house anymore. You change out your siding, the vinyl, you did all that. it's not that old house and you've lost the uh, what made it special in the first place. So the windows are a big part of that, right? That's the, the eyes of the window into the soul. Well, I think that the windows are the eyes of your house and you put replacement windows on an old house and you're giving the house a black eye. So that idea of number three, the architectural integrity of it, maybe the windows aren't the only part of it, but they are definitely a big part of the architectural integrity of the house. If you guys want to go check on my Instagram, I've got some stuff on there that you can check out where uh, I've got a house where it had beautiful leaded glass windows. They replaced them with white vinyl one over ones. And it was like, what happened? It looks like a completely different house. So do keep that in mind, the architectural integrity and the people who are going to buy that old house who like old houses, these are people who are, what do you think? They're buying an old house because they want an old house. If they want a new house, they go buy a new house. And I have no problem with those people. There are new house people and there are old house people, just like there are dog people and there are cat people. And they should stick with what they love. So there's three reasons. Let's see if we can come up with a fourth one. Hmm. Four reasons to restore your historic windows. Aha! Cost! How about that? Now you're going to say, oh, no, 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 no. I've gotten a quote for restoring my windows. Crazy expensive. Can't afford it. No, shouldn't do it. Okay, what if I told you that you have to maintain old windows? You probably understand that. You're like, of course I have to maintain my old windows. It's stupid. Why would you say I wouldn't have to maintain my windows? Right, so if I go 40, 50, 60 years without doing anything to my old windows, it's a little bit like compound interest, and you happen to be, unfortunately, the current homeowner who got stuck with the bill. The last owner or two owners or three owners didn't do anything to your windows, right? They maybe slapped a coat of paint on it, but they haven't changed the ropes, they haven't cleaned up the hardware. Uh, they didn't do a good job painting it. They didn't replace the putty. That all has to be done. Just like changing the oil on your car, I don't have any problem. If somebody wanted to gift me a 1965 Ferrari that was not uh, had not had the oil changed in a while, I'm going to have a lot of stuff I need to repair. But I, you better believe I'm still going to take that 1965 Ferrari and I'm going to fix it up because the, the intrinsic value is in there. This is, this is the Ferrari in my hand. It's a very small Ferrari. Um, but that window is extremely valuable. It just has been abused. So abuse doesn't rule out proper use. Just because it was abused before you got it doesn't mean that you can't restore it and bring it back to how it should be. And that window can now last you. Cost-wise, it's expensive to restore. I'm not going to lie. You, you guys all understand that if you've had a quote. We're talking maybe $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 maybe to restore a single window. But once it's restored, your maintenance costs on that window every year, you're looking at maybe, if you do it yourself, a buck a window if you have somebody else if you hire someone to do it we do it for a lot of clients the annual maintenance we come outside we clean the outside touch up a little bit of paint here clean the glass it takes us 10-15 minutes max that's not that expensive no materials maybe a little leftover paint there's really nothing to it you're talking 10 to 20 dollars a year to simply maintain that window and it never has to get thrown away you don't have to get a new window in 20 years when it fails so if you look at the long-term cost, maybe you're not in the house for 60 years, 80 years, but once you get past about 40 years, the cost to keep your original windows, which will last basically indefinitely, is way lower long-term than it is to get new windows. Because even with the energy savings that you may get on those, right, the 10 to $15 a month, it just doesn't add up. And I'll tell you a, a story for me. Uh, what got me started down this road is I went and visited Paul Revere's house in Boston. If any of you are from Boston, glad to have you with me. But I went and visited up there, and I looked at this um, house, which was amazing, built in the 1600s. I forget what year exactly it was built, but it was the 1600s. And this house, they were, they were going through the tour, and it's just amazing to see all this character, and you just touch the history, and you feel it oozing out of the walls and the wide plank floors. And they were like, these are the original uh, wood windows. And I went... I don't understand how those are the original wood windows. It's not possible. They're, you're talking 300 plus years old. They can't be. And they said, well, they've just been maintained. They've been cared for. This has been a landmark for a long, long, long time. And so it's been cared and maintained for. And I was like, when I saw a wood window, realizing it's so simple, it's just wood, putty, and glass, right? Maybe a couple hinges, a couple ropes. Nothing that can't be replaced, renewed, 
right? The, oh, we'll repair it. We'll take the old paint off, put new paint on. We'll take the old putty out, put new putty on. But the window is still there. The wood, wood doesn't really wear out, especially that old growth wood. And if you want to see it, check out my Instagram. I've got some great pictures on old growth wood, the difference between that and the new stuff. It's night and day. But they'll just last. So your original windows, if your house was built before World War II, I would venture to say that you've got old growth wood or steel windows, that same kind of style. They will really last indefinitely. There's no lifespan for them. Unlike replacement windows, which check them out, they may say lifetime warranty, but they know that we move every seven years and nobody's going to really check the warranty on their windows because they're like, well, you're, you're going you're gonna, to, you know, they'll wear out. They won't be as effective. You'll throw them away. You'll get new ones. These original wood windows, you can keep them. You can keep them out of the landfill. And the costs for them long term are far cheaper than getting replacement windows. Hands down, it's not even, not even close when you look at the long term costs. And the longer you go out, the longer the horizon goes, 100, 150 years. I know that doesn't affect you, but it affects the owners of your house. And we want to be good stewards for our world, right? If we're talking about affecting climate change and what's the temperature of the world going to be in 100 years, and people are really passionate about that, myself included right now, it's like, well, what can we do? It's like, it doesn't matter that I'm not going to be here in 100 years. I should still do my part. I should recycle when I can. I should not waste stuff. And I should not throw my windows in the trash and make the next person who lives in this house have to re constantly replace their windows every 10, 15, 20 years, somewhere along those lines. So there's four, there's four quick reasons. I can go into a ton more reasons over time, but I don't want to go long here. And I know we've got a lot of questions to answer. Um, so I'm going to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Abitron. If you guys don't know what Abitron is, Abitron makes, they are makers of amazing uh, wood restoration putties, amazing um, steel restoration, concrete restoration. They make all kinds of great stuff to restore old houses. Definitely go give them some love. If you're on Instagram, it's at Abitron Inc. or check them out at abitron.com. You wanna give them some love. They're a sponsor of Window Wednesdays. They make this happen. Uh, all the time and I am going to jump into some of these questions because we have got a lot of questions and we're going to go back and forth between Instagram and uh, YouTube on here. So one question, is there a way to make them energy efficient or uh, make them not so drafty? So old windows, we were talking about this earlier. Yes, weather strip them. Lots of options on my blog if you want to learn how to do it. We sell spring bronze and the nails to put it up. There's stop gaps, these little weather strips we put on the meeting rails. Lots of ways to weather strip your windows. Get them lined up properly. I've got a ton of tutorials on that um, on uh, YouTube, on uh, the blog, thecraftsmanblog.com, and materials to do it yourself on thecraftsmanstore.com. So do that and add a storm window. Consider adding an interior or exterior storm window, and you're going to make your windows exceed the current energy codes for air infiltration, which is the biggest culprit, right? That's the drafts. None of us like it. So where can we find someone to do ours? Someone to do your windows. Um, reach out to us, um, info at austinhistorical.com. Give us a call. Um, happy to help you. Shoot me a DM or comment here if you need, uh, if you want help with that. Definitely something we can help you with. We do windows. We've got a team going up to Washington, D.C. We're down here in Orlando, Florida, um, but we're down in South Florida. We're, we work as far west. We've got a team out in Texas right now. We are all over the place, and we will do your windows wherever you are in the U.S., and possibly Mexico and Canada, unless there's any problems there. We haven't gone international yet, but we have some clients that will ship us the sash. We'll restore them and ship them right back, or we'll go on site and work. So totally open to it uh, and reach out to us. That's info at austinhistorical.com. We'll get you hooked up. Uh, I got another one too. We're, we're, we've 42 windows. Wow. And no margin to fix them. Sigh. Trying to move. Pray uh, next owner does. Hopefully they can. If you want, you know, what you can do, the best thing you can do in that case is just simply keep the windows. Leave them where they are. Do some little spot treatments. If you got some rot, use some Abitron, fix that rot, touch up the paint a little bit, and that is something you can cut a couple free if you want some airflow. You don't have to do all the windows. It's all about keeping the windows, and maybe you're not the one to restore them, but maybe the next person is. Once you replace them, nobody has the opportunity to restore them anymore. So um, I feel your pain. 30, 42 windows. There's a lot of windows in these old houses. Uh, where can I learn to build new old-fashioned window frames and sashes, tools, measurements, etc.? I've been getting this question a lot. It's pretty involved to put together. I am working on shooting some videos right now. I'm going to, I thought about just putting up like a video, a simple video on YouTube, but I think that that's going to be a little too complicated. So what I'm working on right now, and it's going to take me some time, I'm not going to be ready this year, it's going to be ready early next year, is a course to help you build windows. And it's going to be on teachable, different chapters, how to pick your wood, how to size it, how to mill it how to cut everything like that. So th there's a lot of different styles of windows too. So we're gonna go into like casements and double hung, single hung, things like that. 
So I am gonna put something together, but it's gonna take a little while to put together because there's so much involved in learning to build windows, but I am working on it. Uh, why are there sometimes, why are they sometimes better at insulating in winter than new ones? Um, it, really, so one of the things that uh, you'll see, so you got double pane glass, we'll use this comparison. Double pane glass, you got a pane of glass, uh, maybe a half inch air gap and another pane of glass. That's what you got right there. Cool, that's great. You know, this air in between has to heat up or cool down. Got cold air coming in here, here's the inside. That's gotta get really cooled before it transfers the heat through. If you do a storm window, you went from half inch to probably two to three inches, maybe even four inches. Now you got a lot more air that has to be changed out on the temperature wise. So a storm window in terms of thermal bridging is actually more effective because the storm window also covers the whole window opening, not just what you're talking about of the glass. That's double pane glass. You still got one frame. On a storm window, you've got two frames, lots of air in between, and two pieces of glass, big gap. That's how it can be more effective using a storm window. And you can use both an interior or an exterior storm window, so you've got options. Uh, another question, everything, what might cause them to not shut properly? Usually I find that it is, you're, you've got stuff that's not shutting properly because you've got windows that are all cocked up, full of excess paint, problems like that. So um, I, I stay away from, uh, I, I stay away from excess paint, like scrape it, clean it off. Don't use caulk around the perimeter of it. You've got to get it cleaned up and function, functioning right. And that's usually what it is. It's just built up paint and caulk. If you get that cleaned up, you should be in good shape. Uh, question here on YouTube. Hi, your thoughts, Ari, a pneumatic stapler with stainless narrow gauge staples for spring bronze install instead of all those nails. I have used that. Um, I thought it was, it worked pretty good. It was hard for me to get the, get it dialed in really, because um, the staples could easily blow through the spring bronze. It's very, um, uh, very soft. And I, it was easier for me to start nailing. I found, I worked on better ways to nail my spring bronze up instead of trying to just use a pneumatic stapler. And I also didn't like the way that the pneumatic staples looked. So something to think about there. Another question here, how do you paint new parting beads so windows don't stick and bind to it, paint in place? So I usually make my new parting bead, set it aside, I paint it early in my process so it has the most time to cure, and I paint with, um, I use, I make sure I'm using an enamel paint, a good paint that has a lot of, um, is not, does not have a lot of blocking, so not a sticky like house paint or anything like that. Uh, one of the ones I've used with good experience are some of the ones I've used, uh, Benmore Impervo, I've used Sherman Williams Snap Dry. Uh, just started using Pratt and Lambert Aqua Enamel that I've really enjoyed on this. Um, ben Moore uh, also makes a good one called Ultra Spec. There are some good paints out there that do not um, stick as much to others, and that's where I would go. Uh, another one: Can double glazed glass be put on old metal frames? It can. Usually, my preference on old steel windows is to use laminated glass. So I like getting quarter-inch laminated glass. I think because the problem I have with double pane glass is it eventually will fail. The seals fail, it fogs up and you have to throw it away. I like if you can have if you can have two panes of glass, laminated glass does not have the air seal. It's pane of glass, pane of glass, and then you've got a thin piece of plastic between the two. So there's a, a little bit of a thermal break in there and it's much better at sound dampening, even sometimes more so than um, uh, insulated glass, than double pane glass like that. So I prefer quarter inch laminated glass on my steel windows. I think that works great for that purpose. Uh, another question, when are you coming to California to fix mine? Slightly kidding, not really. Um, California is a little bit of a trip from Florida, so uh, love to help you, but uh, it's a little haul, but we can certainly look into that and see if it'll make sense. So a couple more questions here. I love that there's so many in here. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, another one, restoration is giving to the future. I love that statement. I restored stained glass by trade. That is awesome. Uh, solar screening. I love solar screening. That's another way to cut down on the temperature issues that you may have on uh, a window. You can install screening that really blocks some of that heat if that's a potential issue for you if you're in a southern climate. Absolutely. Put solar screens on and then you, can, you don't have to change out your windows. Uh, another question. My house has aluminum storm windows. They're in terrible condition. I've called some window companies and all seem extremely hesitant to replace them. What should I do? Um, well, it depends what you uh, want to do. I would, I, I probably would keep the storms. If you don't like them, if they're not working well or you don't feel like they're effective, then yeah, you can, uh, you can change those out. 
There are companies uh, like uh, that I would look at for storm windows. Allied makes some very good storm windows. Uh, Monray is another good storm window manufacturer, and they may know a dealer or an installer in your area if you call some of those storm windows. I think that's usually the best way is reaching out to them, seeing what they know and how they can help you. Uh, sorry for the wobbly camera on here a little bit as we look at these questions. One restore, um, just bought new to me old house built 1910. Most original windows have storms. Why do they have three holes on the bottom styles? Good question. So uh, that is from uh, Derek Hurst on YouTube. So the reason you've got those are those are the little weep holes. So on a storm window, one of the ways that you can have problems is if you don't have weep holes. If you get moisture, there actually needs to be a little bit of airflow or um, uh, basically airflow to keep your windows, the, the air between your window and your storm window from getting too hot, too cold, fogging up with uh, humidity, rotting out, you can have that problem occur. So a little bit of air exchange is expected in there and that's normal. That's how you have storm windows that are meant to function well when those get plugged up. You're usually gonna have problems with paint failing or rot issues. So I would highly recommend that you, uh, that you keep those where they are. And if you're gonna build new storm windows, that's something you should look at is adding weep holes. Um, another question on here. If you don't completely strip your trim, can you add oil primer on top of the latex paint? Yes. I actually have a post next Monday coming out talking about what you need to do on this, but you can paint over, you can paint oil over latex. Here's how it works. You got latex paint, or you got oil paint as a base. What you should do is put oil-based primer on it. You should always sand it and prep it, clean it up real good, but you put oil-based primer on top of it, and then you can top coat with whatever you want. Latex or oil-based, anything on top of that is fine if you use an oil-based primer. That gives you a good solid base. You don't have to worry about whatever type of paint is under there, whether it's a milk paint, oil paint, varnish, any of that stuff, an oil-based primer will do the best, and it'll be good for stain blocking too. So uh, look for that post on Monday. I've got some more. There's more details in there, but that's the, the short and dirty answer. Uh, getting the right fit when you are ready to reassemble. It can be tough. I mean, if you've pulled your windows out and they, you know, you pulled your sash out of where the window is out of the frame, then you shouldn't have too much trouble other than tuning your parting bead to fit in there and uh, getting your stops in. In terms of the fit for the stops, I like to put my interior stops on my sash right up against it and then I fit a, a, uh, a putty knife between the stop and the sash and that's enough give for me right there. I don't want a big space in there because I don't want air flowing through there, but I do need enough that that sash can operate up and down smoothly. And then for the parting bead, the parting beads need to be all the way in so that you've got, you know, you've got room for your sash to move up and down. You also may have to, if you've got a casement, you may have to shim a little bit. Business card I find is a great thing to shim with. You just put it underneath your, uh, the hinge a little bit. You can move it out. One piece of a business card is usually a 16th, two and eighth, and you can go up like that and you can get that right fit to kind of adjust your casement in the opening. Casements are really a pain to adjust and they take more time for, in my experience. Uh, favorite window treatments for old windows? That's a cool question. Um, I really like the cellular shades. Uh, I think that they're great at, uh, I have them upstairs on my house. Fortunately, the previous owner put them in there and they're great at keeping the heat out or the cold out, either way. They're great at keeping the temperature out when I don't want the outside to come in, when I want that temperature separated. So. Uh, cellular shades I love. I do love curtains too. Uh, my friend Allison Hardy at Window Woman of New England, she does, she has winter drapes and summer drapes. And that's how people used to do it. It's like if you put big, thick, heavy winter drapes and cellular shades over your windows, you're not going to feel the cold drafts and the cold air coming in there. It's not coming in through that. In the summer, you get lighter, airier drapes and it's just beautiful to put on there. Some nice curtains. So I think that that's, uh, that's really an option for you. If you haven't thought about it, you're like, I just have inefficient windows. Why don't you put some like you could put plantation shutters if you want, but put some cellular shades, some drapes on it, change them out for the season, gives you some variety in the house, it might look really nice. And you've also got something that's gonna keep the uh, energy where it needs to be, keep the heat out, keep the cold in, whatever you want, depending on the season. So how to reglaze a 130 year old window that cannot be removed from the barn wall it's installed in. Ah, yes, how do you do that? Uh, same way you glaze, I have a lot of videos of glazing on my work table. A lot of people ask me, can you do that on site and like yeah absolutely it's just it's easier on a table right you've got control it's all flat if you do it out on site not a problem it's just i got to do it on a ladder or wherever i am the glazing putty falls not on glass it falls down on me if i need to 
So it's just a little bit harder to do, but you can chip out the old glazing, lay in some new glazing, use your, your glazing knife, get it nice and smooth, clean corners. It's not a problem. Nothing different than you should do in the shop other than it's just harder to work on it. Um, how to make them functional, smooth, but also seal. Uh, for me, that is usually metal weather stripping. So spring bronze, I find, is the most DIY friendly kind of weather stripping that works great for casements, for doors, really, hoppers, awnings, double hungs, single hungs, really any kind of window. And uh, the, the reason it makes them operate smoothly is because you've got wood sliding on metal instead of wood sliding on wood or painted surfaces on painted surfaces. The spring bronze is not painted. And then you can come through and put your sash in and it slides, opens, closes very nicely, whatever you need to. So metal weather stripping, whether it's integrated metal or spring bronze, those are two good options. Integrated metal, very effective, um, and but uh, very difficult to install. So uh, speaking of weather stripping, it is October right now if you're watching this live. And uh, one thing you may want to check out is go to uh, my blog, go to thecraftsmanblog.com and check it out. You see courses up there. I have two courses. One of them is thewindowcourse.com. And that's everything you need to do to know to restore your window top to bottom, videos, tutorials. Um, you get a, if you sign up for one of them, you get a free IR paint stripper, which is a pretty awesome tool to get for free. Um, the other thing I have there is I have a weather stripping basics course that talks about how to install um, seasonal weather stripping, how to do spring bronze, how to work with windows that have integrated metal weather stripping, and some other um, options on there for weather stripping. We talk a little bit about some storm window options too. So two great courses that you can get to go more in depth on how to make your windows more efficient. So do check those out. That's at thecraftsmanblog.com and look for the menu up top courses or you can go to thewindowcourse.com. All right, a couple more questions. Uh, give, sim uh, give single hung windows some love. I have 22 I've been restoring but haven't done, uh, I don't know what that, but haven't done much. So yeah, I, I like single hung windows a lot. They don't get, they're not as popular down here in Florida. They don't get as much airflow. But on historic windows, I go to St. Augustine, when you get like really old windows, 1700s and stuff, most things were single hung windows. They're very, very simple to work on. You don't even have usually the ropes and pulleys, right? You've got some unique balance system, just a piece of wood underneath it sometimes. We even sell something for those called the window stick, uh, another Allison Hardy invention that we've picked up on. And there's, uh, there's a lot of great options out there for, um, for single hungs and they're just so simple to work with. I love them, love them, love them. I just don't get to see them as often. Any advice before I hang a storm on a second floor window? That's a really great question. Uh, please be careful. Um, I, I know it's no fun uh, hanging a, a storm window on a second story. It can be honestly a real bear. Um, and I want you to be safe. I want you to take care of yourself. So if you're gonna get up that ladder, have a helper, have somebody to support it. Um, and uh, I have done one thing that I, I thought was um, kind of helpful for this, but. I put a hook up in the soffit once when I was installing some second story windows, second story storm windows, put a hook up there, ran some sash cord. I use a Samson sash cord, so it's plenty strong. And I tied the sash cord to my the top of my storm window on the hooks, and uh, one of the hooks. And I used that to, I carried it, but I had a helper down there, like kind of like belaying me, like I was climbing, uh, doing rock climbing. And they were helping to support it so I didn't have to carry that whole like 20 or 25 pound storm window up the ladder. And then once I had one hook in place, I untied that one and put the other one on and we were safely in place. So get creative, look at your setup and see what the best way to do it is. Uh, all right, I saw a couple other questions come through here. Uh, let's see, I use solar screen on my west side. I knew you would Trevor, you're a smart guy. Replica window, uh, wooden storms with removable lower panel. Yes, I am working on making a set of plans for replica um, wood storm windows. I have some plans available on my site to build storm windows, to build screens, but I'm working on a set of plans right now for building wood storms that have a removable panel on the bottom to take out the glass and put in a screen. So working on that. Uh, any ideas where to find parts for 1960s Rusco aluminum storm windows, rubber seals, and pile weather stripping? I would check CR Lawrence, um, L-A-U-R for Lawrence. And I would also check um, Blaine uh, Window Supply and Strybuck, S-T-R-Y-B-U-C. Check out those websites and they may have some weather stripping and some parts for those type of mid-century windows. Um, trick for improving corners and glazing. Yeah, there's not really a trick for it. Um, it's just uh, tighten it up and I wish I could tell you, it's just get a tight miter and just keep practicing. The nice thing about glazing putty is if you don't like it, you can dig it out and start over again, but just keep practicing you will get there. 
in time. Glazing does take some time. Use the, R, uh, use the IR paint stripper this weekend. Worked great in windows with six plus, yeah, six plus layers of paint. I am so glad to hear that. I, I used it here, I tested it for a long time before we let it loose, and uh, I'm glad that you're having good luck with it. The, speaking of which, we just finally, due to all this backup and customs, it's driving me nuts, but we just got our next shipment of IR paint strippers. They are here. I am turning them on in the store right now. You haven't been able to even order them because I didn't know when they were gonna get in, and I felt bad. We, we had such a big backlog of hundreds of them from people that are like, I'm waiting for it. It's like, I'm waiting for them too. They came yesterday. So we've got pallets of these paint strippers ready to start shipping out. They are coming out right now. We're shipping 20 to 30 a day as fast as we can. So I apologize for the wait on those. And I'm going to turn it back on in the store so you'll be able to order them. Should be able to tonight, if not tomorrow. Um, so they are back up. And if you, for those of you who don't know, um, our IR paint stripper is a new infrared paint stripper that is able to um, help you strip down through multiple layers of paint. And uh, it's mo the, uh, the other paint strippers, the IR paint strippers out there, the other infrared tools out there are much more expensive. We're talking 400 plus dollars. This one is right now $129. So uh, price does go up and down a little bit depending on what's going on. Uh, Trevor, you're saying with supply issues, what's the next best thing? To oil primer, and that's the truth. I think water base is here to stay. I think it is too, to an extent. I think there's always going to be a place for water based primer uh, or for oil based primer, and it's going to be around for those of you in California or other states where they're saying, no, we're not going to let you use it. My apologies. It really is the only thing I know that works in some situations. So the fact that they're just simply removing tools from our ability, you know, from what we have is very, very frustrating and annoying. So there, there's not much we, we can do about it. A um, couple other questions here before we close out. Uh, got, uh, let's see. Yay on cellular shades, yes, plus curtains. In winter, I close them. That's a good way to do it. <laughs> um, in zone five, I'm in zone five, converted the double hungs to single hung, fixed the top sash, air sealed and insulated the top sash, weight pocket space. That's an option you can do um, if you are really uh, focused on uh, on the energy efficiency you can like seal up that top sash you've only got one sash to really worry about in that case and i saw somebody else asking uh how do you get that stubborn putty off somebody mentioned use a steamer yes um, you can use infrared heat that works the iron paint stripper works great for that but really to get putty hardened dried out putty out it's using a chisel five and one razor knife whatever you need and you've got to just heat it up and it can get softer. Sometimes it's so dried out that it's not gonna get softer anymore. But steam heat is a great option. We have a steamer that we use here. You can make your own steamer. steamer. Um, old window restorer, that's uh, Dave Bowers, has some plans to it. If you Google uh, old, old O-L-D-E window restorer, you can find those plans. I think they're like 20 bucks. You need some insulation and for like 100, $150, well, right now it's probably $200, in materials you can build your own steam box with a jiffy steamer and some insulation and framing stuff it worked great for us we have a, a higher end steamer that's very expensive it's called the steam stripper now it's more commercial but you can certainly build your own and just even just use a jiffy steamer get a jiffy steamer and put that steam on the putty it will soften it i promise so heat or steam heat those work great for softening uh tough putty so all right this is awesome i love seeing you guys all here we had tons of people here this wednesday i loved having you We've gone about 38 minutes, so I am going to sign off. Next week, we're going to be talking Windows again. So please join us. If you've got any topics, send them, leave them to me in the comments here. Anything you want me to cover, you're like, I'm dying to know more about this, let me know. That's what I'm here for. That's what Window Wednesday Live is all about. And uh, always good to see you guys. Lala Lovey, good to see you. So glad to have you on here always. And uh, thanks, guys. Until next week, take care.